yes, we got some some good good comments back, and um, and there was a consistency. Everybody agreed that the sound should be wetter, more effective. And yet, at the same time, they wanted not to lose the low end. And so, after some thought, I think we figured out how to do that rather well. I'm, I'm rather pleased with that. I can't talk about it, or, of course, I'd have to kill you. So, we came up with a special algorithm, um, which retains almost all the bass frequencies and the bass content without sacrificing the, uh, the wet signal that's applied to the uh, the higher frequencies. There's special code in there that looks for small gaps in the sound. So if you leave a tiny bit of silence between notes, then it sees that and it resets the envelope down to zero. Tuning the envelope follower to get it to the response that you need to in analog is you know, a long process of changing resistors and changing values of things. And, and even then you lose some of the consistency from one to the next depending on what the tolerances of the, uh, the components are. And, and in the digital world, you, know, you can edit the algorithm and you can do things that, you just, that would be very difficult to do in the analog world. Well, the frequency knob moves the entire peak structure, whatever it may be, as a unit to higher frequencies or lower frequencies. So if you have the frequency knob set really low, it's going to sound somewhat dark because it's moving over lower frequencies. As you turn it up, it's going to sound sort of sound thinner um, as it moves over the higher frequencies. couple things put into one control on the speed knob it's uh on one side of the control which is kind of the normal mode you have uh, a fixed fast attack and most envelope controller most envelope filters work that way where they have a quick attack and then you have some ability to control the the decay speed so on that one on the right side of the knob you have a fixed attack and as you turn the knob your controller you're slowing down the decay speed <laughs> And then the other side of the knob, if you turn it back to the left, you can uh, control both the attack and decay at the same time. So they have the same exact value, but they're either going to be, you know, both be slow or both be fast. The real guitar signal generally uh, has a very fast attack, uh, guitar being a more percussive instrument. You can get a slow attack on the envelope then by setting that control towards the most counterclockwise position. And then you will hear all the filter motion begins at the note attack, and it will then last um, oh, maybe up to a second or so at the slowest settings. <laughs> A positive sweep is where the filter starts at a low frequency and then moves up in response to the guitar signal coming in. Um, and then a negative sweep would be where it starts at some higher value. And as the, as the envelope follower signal goes up, then the filter is going to go down. So it just does a reverse. The positive sweep is the more common one. So that's what people are going to be used to hearing. <laughs> For the positive filter sweep setting, if I've 
defined in the in the code that that means these filters move away from each other negative sweep they move towards each other <laughs> Players that are known for using an envelope builder, some songs, for example. Stevie McStevens and the uh, John Harrelson Quartet <laughs> in uh, Breakdown Thunder. Classic, <laughs> classic use of a wah wah in that one. Well, I mean, let, let me see. Well, you know, there's Bootsy. Sort of once you put an envelope filter on bass, it, it becomes funk, you know. Uh, First well, of the great country. Uh, Envelope filter bass players. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they're all nameless Nashville session men who, uh, who after their first session in which they tried to use an envelope filter on the bass, uh, well. first and then okay I've got it and scene 